the Panther tank has a reputation of being the best German tank of World War II, and some have even suggested that it was the best tank in the whole of the conflict. However, was the Panther tank actually that good, or has it been blown out of proportion by the mythology and propaganda of the Second World War? Most people are aware of the strengths of the Panther, for example, its effective thick frontal armour, which was stronger than the early American Sherman tanks and also the legendary Tiger tank. Its huge cannon, which could tear into vehicles easily, and its sloped armour also made it a very effective weapon. However, in this video, we will challenge this idea and investigate why the Panther wasn't as amazing as first thought. Remember, to support the channel, please make sure to subscribe. During the early successes of the Wehrmacht in the Second World War, the Panzer III and IV was doing rather well. However, following conflicts in Russia, a new medium tank needed to be developed to combat the T-34. The reputation of the Panther as a tank killer was one based around the weaponry and also survivability of this vehicle. The KWK-42 main gun was one of the most effective anti-armour weapons carried by any tank in the Second World War. This armament had more penetrating power than the main gun of the Tiger I, however the Tiger's larger 88mm projectile could inflict more damage if it penetrated. The gun on the Panther had to be specially reinforced. It was over 15 feet long, and this was difficult for fighting in difficult terrain such as street fighting and in the boggy earth of the Normandy Bocage. Also, the muzzle blast from the main gun was so severe that it could produce concussion injuries in infantry if they were close to the tank when the gun went off. The KWK-42 also had to use a shell that was very different to the standard 75mm shells used by the German troops, which made getting the ammunition to the Panther tricky. The sights on board a Panther weren't great too, and the gunner was only equipped with a telescopic binocular sight. This was effective once a target had been found, however locating a target in the first instance was tricky. Most Allied tanks had two sights for the gunner, a panoramic sight and a telescopic sight. In the Panther, it took time for a gunner to locate a target once they had been given instruction from a commander whose job it was to find the targets. In tank warfare, it's very important to get the first shot off, and this was a problem inside the Panther. Another issue on board the Panther was its weight. Weighing in at around 45 tonnes and being absolutely colossal, it couldn't use some bridges and also to transport it via rail, special railroad wagons had to be used. The interleaved road wheels on the Panther also became prone to being clogged with mud and could even freeze up during cold winter months. The torsion bar suspension and the road wheels did give it overall a smooth cross-country ride in good conditions, however. With regards to the armour, although heavily armoured, it wasn't completely perfect. The face hardened steel on board would split if it was hit, and shards of lethal metal splinters would be fired inside the interior of the tank, even if a shell hadn't fully penetrated the tank. Also, the gun mantlet was a big problem on board. It created a shot trap, in which shots could be deflected down into the thin armour above the driver and the radio operator's compartments. This could often lead to a crew being knocked out due to this flaw. The side armour on the earlier versions of the Panther was also thin, around 40mm thick, and Allied crews would quickly work out that hitting a Panther in the side could lead to the tank being knocked out and quickly catching fire. The Panther's greatest flaw though was its reliability. Early models of the tank were rushed into service, and the later models suffered from Allied bombing of the factories, in which caused a shortage of high-grade steel. The lack of reliability of the engine and drivetrain was also due to changes in design. Originally, the engine was designed for a tank weighing around 30 to 35 tonnes, however as the heavier armour on the Panther was added, the engine would regularly break down. The 30% higher weight would also lead to the Panther suffering from high fuel consumption and more deadly overheating and catching fire. The engine was also known to blow head gaskets and it was found that a drivetrain would last around 150 kilometers on a Panther, less than a single tank of fuel would. Towards the end of the war, it also became difficult to service these vehicles and if a journey over 25 kilometers was planned, it would be preferred to ship a Panther on rail rather than it simply drive to a destination. 
it's estimated that between 60 to 70 percent of early Panthers that saw action on the Eastern Front were lost due to mechanical issues rather than being knocked out by the enemy. Another issue was fire. Before the Battle of Kursk, two Panthers even caught fire when they were being taken off railroad wagons. Also during the course of the war, only 6,000 Panthers were produced. Compared to the amount of Shermans and T-34 tanks, this was a minuscule amount. So hopefully this video has opened your eyes to the drawbacks of the Panther tank. Although today it's heralded as an incredible weapon of war, it wasn't as effective as some people make it out to be. Yes, it had a fantastic gun and the armour was mostly effective, especially at the front. However, it's a tank born out of the quick desire to rush production to rival what the Soviets and the Allies were making. The Panther was rushed out onto the battlefields of the East and Western Fronts with so much haste that the flaws were not ironed out, especially the biggest one in regards to its reliability. For these reliability issues would plague the Wehrmacht and the tank crews. As the designs for the Panther matured and production was smoothed over, they did become better tanks, however the initial failure of the Panther has dented its legacy. Once again, thank you for watching The Untold Past. To support the channel, please make sure to subscribe. Once again, thank you for watching.